Welcome to this episode of DermTube Journal Club. I'm Dr. Nancy Samolaitis, your host, and I'm lucky to be here with Dr. Joel Cohen, and we're going to be talking about hand rejuvenation today. So welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. So what's new in hand rejuvenation? I think over the years we've spent so much emphasis on really facial aesthetics and understanding how we can get the face to look better. And I think people really aren't aware that there are so many options for hand rejuvenation at this point, as well as neck rejuvenation. So I think when we see patients that have been patients for a long time, they really may not understand that we can really have a whole spectrum of things that we can offer them at this point, from volume loss and using fillers. Radius has now proved, as we know, for the past year and a half in dorsal hand augmentation. People see very nice results and very good duration addressing the lentigenes that people get on their hands as well as some of the textural changes. So one of the things that I talk to patients about is really coming up with a, a comprehensive plan to address the dorsal hands so that they feel comfortable and feel like their hands really match the way that they are internally in terms of feeling young and energetic um, and what we've done on their face over the number of years. So I think many of these patients we address by using IPL devices or broadband BBL type devices to treat the lentigenes and overall photo damage. Um, starting with something like that and then going to fillers and then using even a micro laser erbium peel or some of the very light fractional ablative settings to really help over the course of a few treatments some of the creping changes that we get to the hands. And then topical skin care is super important, not only really understanding the importance of sunscreen and them using it regularly and reapplying, especially when they're driving, but also using topical retinoids and some of the pigment correction products as well. So other than Radius, which is now FDA approved for treating hands, are there other fillers that you've had good experiences with in the hands? Well, Radius has really been my go-to filler because it is FDA approved. And I think that the opacity of it actually helps camouflage some of the veins and not just adds volume, but really that camouflage can be helpful. But I've certainly used Restyl and Lift, which used to be called Perlane. There's a lot of patients who've used it over the years, like the product, and really understand that that works well for them. So we certainly do use it in the dorsal hands as well. It's an area where I tend to use cannulas. I, I tend to use one or two little injection sites. And my approach is to actually go from proximally to distally. So I stand next to the patient, have them tilt their hand out, and really inject using the cannula in this type of fashion. And it works well for these folks. Um, and I feel like I see less bruising, less swelling, and probably less pain as well during the injection. But it's really not a, a highly painful procedure at all. When you do your resurfacing, uh, do you usually treat the entire dorsal hand, including the fingers? I do. So I use a lot of the Erbium micro laser peel. So I'm usually at about 15 microns with uh, the Cyton device. And I just go over the entire dorsal hand. It usually takes patients about four or five days until that redness clears. And for those first few days after treatment, just a lot of Aquaphor and Vaseline type products. Um, but they can do well. And I, I think it's important to address those textural changes. And I think it helps lift up some of the residual pigmentation as well. So sometimes on a second treatment, I might do the BBL plus the micro laser peel on the same session. But I think it's important to start with the hands with something that's really going to give them minimal downtime, minimal discomfort. So treating with IPL device or broadband light device first, let them having those coffee grounds for a few days, make sure their hands are not tan. And then that next treatment, talk to them about potentially doing fillers or continuing on with the BBL. And then micro laser peel plus the BBL or micro laser peel alone and the subsequent treatments. But it usually takes a few months to get to the hands where they want them to be. And if there's a major event coming up, I think it's really good timing. They'll feel comfortable reaching out and shaking somebody's hand or being at the table and reaching out to grab something and feel really good about the way they look. Are there certain topical products that you recommend for home care? So from a home care perspective, topical retinoids are really the mainstay of my treatment for the dorsal hands as well as pigment correction products. So PCA Skin has a retinol product that's really nice that actually has some pigment correction products in it. Um, and then we use a lot of the Biopel Retroderm, uh, especially the milder formulation. And that works well as an emulsion and a higher protein content for some people. And then some of the other gels, um, like pig, non-HQ pigment correction gel from PCA, we use a lot of Lytera on the dorsal hand because as non-HQ products, we can use it year-round, long-term, and not have to worry about any of the other issues associated with long-term use or potential long-term use of hydroquinone products. All right, well, thank you so much. And it's so interesting that we can extend our experience with treating the face onto the body. And I think it's very important to make sure that everything matches. I agree. <laughs> and thank you for joining us for this episode of DermTube Journal Club, and we'll see you next time.